police military security force. Um, so there was a, a, a humanitarian crisis in terms of access to food, in terms of impact on the economy, in terms of destruction of, uh, of uh, uh, um, or basically putting all uh, operations, uh, economic operations out of business uh, to the extent that Gaza, Gazan economy is or was heavily dependent on exports, both uh, manufacturers, uh, a primary one being sort of just sort of small sewing shops or <coughs> big shops with lots of sewing machines in them that manufacturing clothing, mostly for Israeli suppliers uh, for sale both in Israel and then for, for export. Um, those operations were completely disrupted, and, and indeed, many of those plants were, were destroyed. Uh, but in any case, they would have been disrupted by the border closures. There have been no, that's zero, exports uh, from Gaza, uh, either manufacturers of this sort or agricultural exports, uh, the other sort of main sector where uh, the Gazan economy depends on. So, uh, again, we, we cite in our report um, the, uh, um, uh, the assessment of the World Bank and other bodies like that in terms of what the impact on the economy was, but basically it, it, it pretty much wiped out. It, it strangled the Gazan economy. Uh, and that meant strangling livelihoods and making people uh, in Gaza even more dependent in terms of numbers and in terms of the intensity or severity of the crisis, dependent on on food a food and other aid uh, provided by UNRWA, if you were part of the refugee population, uh, by uh, international humanitarian agencies like Oxfam and CARE, uh, WHO, uh, and so forth. Um, so that by, by you know, December 26th, you had a, an extremely aid-dependent um, uh, population uh, and a population that, had, that was uh, increasingly, um, uh, uh, you know, certainly, and the Israelis through all of this were, and, and they're on the record as basically saying this is what they were doing. They were very carefully calibrating. I mean, they weren't going to let, you know, anybody starve to death. And in fact, we don't know of any cases where people starve to death. Uh, so that's apparently the criteria and the only criteria as to whether there's a humanitarian crisis. If people aren't starving to death or if there aren't measurable indices of malnutrition in, in little children and so forth, then, hey, what are you talking about? No humanitarian crisis. Um, and, of course, that's, a, that's an extremely uh, prejudicial, to put it mildly, prejudicial way of casting the... The, the situation. So what happened on December 27th and over the last three weeks was not the onset of a, a humanitarian crisis, but really the explosion of a humanitarian crisis. Uh, because then on top of all the shortages that had been imposed uh, over the 19 months of serious blockade, you now had the impact of, well, you, I'm sure you all remember that for December 27th when there were uh, just scored hundreds of airstrikes on, uh, on numerous targets throughout the, uh, throughout the territory, uh, focusing on, uh, of course, Hamas emplacements and camps and so forth, but also on civilian structures, uh, police stations, for instance. Uh, and over the subsequent days, things like the parliament building as well as other government ministries. In other words, institutions that were part of the governing structure but not part of the military operations, and therefore uh, very serious reason to question as to whether they were uh, legitimate targets. Um, these, are, these are issues that we addressed in, in other documents that we've put out and are available on our website um, you know, in the aftermath of December 27th. Again, um, B'Tselem and the other Israeli groups, uh, Physicians for Human Rights Israel and so forth, have also been uh, covering these issues um, very well. So the information is available. It's, it's quite widely available. And now that we and the media uh, and other agencies, uh, humanitarian agencies, are finally able to start getting into Gaza, there's going to be a lot more reporting, obviously, um, and uh, the kinds of investigations that uh, we think are necessary in order to determine to what extent there indeed were and provable, if you will, um, violations of the uh, of the laws of war. Um, maybe just to uh, 
to bring the situation up to date to the extent that, as I said, this was this document that you have was produced about a little over a week ago. Um, the, uh, the field report from the UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, known as OCHA, um, they do field updates or they, during this crisis. They used to do them about once a week. They've been doing them once a day uh, uh, for the last three weeks, essentially. Um, and the, the last one, at least the last one I saw, which was dated yesterday, uh, talked about um, just over 1,300 Palestinians killed, uh, of whom 412 were children uh, and 110 were women. Um, so that's, you know, that's just taking women and children. Uh, uh, enough. I, I, I should back up and say these numbers are estimates. They are estimates that are made uh, essentially by the Ministry of Health, which, yes, it's controlled by Hamas. It's a Hamas ministry in Gaza. Um, but the, you know, the, and the UN, uh, OCHA, for instance, and other UN bodies, you know, attribute it to the Ministry of Health. Uh, we don't know. They don't know uh, what the exact number is. On the one hand, uh, we, we know that people over the, the last three days have been finding bodies in the rubble and so forth. So the numbers are, uh, are going up in one respect. On the other hand, people who were simply missing and maybe in feared to be under the rubble may well turn out, turn up um, at least alive, if not in good shape. Uh, so all numbers like this certainly need to be confirmed. Uh, and I can assure you there will be a dispute uh, over the numbers, not just over was it, you know, 1,309 or 1,325. It's going to be over, you know, were there 400 or 1,300. I mean, those are, that's, I, I can predict that's going to be the kind of level of debate we're going to see, at least for a time until some more authoritative figures come out. Nevertheless, we think that the uh, just because it's the Hamas-run Ministry of Health, there's no reason to sort of discount the figures that are out there and that are, and, and so those are the figures that we've been using. So to go back to those figures of just over 1,300, um, uh, and, and, the, and obviously the number who are children, the number who are women is... Uh, can be you know, reasonably ascertained, um, that's upwards of around 40% of that total. And one certainly can't assume that the other 60%, uh, simply because they're males uh, over the age of 18, are therefore fighters, combatants, and, and not civilians. So it, it seems to me that the estimates that upwards of half, or perhaps well over half, are, are civilians is... is you know, a fairly reasonable understanding that all of this needs to be investigated and confirmed. Um, that's a very large number. Um, it's a large num it's a large number of total deaths, and it's a very large number of of civilian deaths. Given the um, particularly given the capacity of the IDF, uh, its technical capacity and its sort of fighting sophistication, its ability to be much more targeted. Uh, it has the weaponry to do that if it wants to, uh, when it wants to, uh, but once you get into using artillery, 144-millimeter um, artillery in places like Gaza City, where, you know, the, the, the margin of er error and blast radius and so forth adds up to a radius of about three football fields, I mean, you know, once you start using weapons like that, then... Uh, you know, you, you, really, you really can't do that in those kinds of areas unless, unless you're pretty damn sure that there are no civilians within that radius. And as we know, um, that wasn't the case. Um, then there are the displaced. There are now this latest, uh, this later, o latest OCHA report says that as of uh, the end of Tuesday, uh, just over 18,000 people remained in uh, UN shelters. Now, of course, it, there may well be other people displaced living with uh, extended family or with friends or in, in other places besides the UN shelters, but that number had been as high as about 30,000 in the days just before the end of the, just before the, the ceasefire. Um, but, of course, lots of people are going back and finding they no longer have a home. 